If I were a famous YouTuber, I would probably have just called this video, Your Opinion Sucks. And the thumbnail would have been a simple picture of me staring emotively into the camera. You see, when you're building up a YouTube channel, you have no natural audience. The only way for people to see your videos is for your videos to pop up when people are searching for specific things. This can somewhat limit you in what you create. After all, you can't just create content about things you want to talk about, but instead you have to make content around what other people are talking about. I've always been a bit of a natural storyteller, so coming up with new ideas has never been a problem even within the confines of YouTube. When I started this channel in early 2021, the ideas were endless. Idea after idea to the point where I couldn't crank out the videos fast enough where some of my ideas didn't exactly fit within the context of my channel. I had so many ideas, I started a podcast, a new Instagram account, and a TikTok, and I started posting all different kinds of content. And then suddenly, nothing. It was like a faucet had been turned off. It was around the same time that I started reading A Russian Journal by John Steinbeck. It was also around this time that the recent strife in the Middle East between Israel and Palestine began to flare up. But more on that later. Although Steinbeck won a Nobel Prize, I feel like it's one of his lesser known books, probably in part because it's nonfiction. Steinbeck had written several nonfiction titles, but he's obviously renowned for his works of fiction like Of Mice and Men and Grapes of Wrath. I often rely on books as my muse for coming up with ideas. Reading helps me create new ideas and think of things in a unique perspective. When I started reading a Russian journal, I could immediately begin to see an idea forming from the very first chapter. A Russian journal is exactly what the title implies. In the post-World War II era, anti-Russian propaganda was prominent in the US. Growing tired of relying on the media to form opinions for the public about Russia, Steinbeck and photographer friend Robert Kappa decided to go to Russia and see for themselves who the Russian people really are. On the very first page, Steinbeck writes, We were depressed, not so much by the news, but the handling of it. For news is no longer news, at least that part of it which draws the most attention. A man sitting at a desk in Washington or New York rearranges the news to fit his own mental pattern and byline. What we often read as news now is not news at all, but the opinion of half a dozen pundits as to what that news means. Obviously, there's a strong connection to the sentiment that many people today feel about the mainstream media. Since I would hate to pass up an opportunity to intellectually dismantle anyone's dogmatic worldviews, I could instantly see myself crafting a video about how the fake news crowd is woefully ignorant to the fact that the media has always had a bias, and even their favorite news source is not immune to that. But as I read through the book, the idea started to fall apart. Not because it isn't true, but simply because I just don't feel that strongly about it. People are definitely ignorant, sometimes willfully, and they love to seek out information to make them feel more secure in their narrow worldview. But there's no story there, and it's a position I just don't have the energy to defend. And then, Gaza, Israel, Palestine. As it so often happens, all of my social media news feeds became focused on one topic. The memes, videos, blogs, news articles. This person wants you to know you're an anti-Semite for being pro-Palestine. And this person wants you to know you're a colonist for being pro-Israel. And this person wants you to be ashamed for not knowing anything about either. And suddenly, everyone is an expert. Although I've already forgotten the hot news topic prior to the Middle East, and by the time you see this video, the Middle East won't be in the news anymore, I can almost guarantee that people are posing as experts on whatever each of those topics may be. The irony is, we have become the very pundits that John Steinbeck loathed enough to board a plane to Russia during the Cold War. We have replaced the pundits of mainstream media. We have become the people who are telling each other what we are supposed to think about the news. As individuals, we are not reporting on the news, we are telling other people how they are supposed to act and feel based on that news. There's just one problem with that. Your opinion? It sucks. It seems that collectively we are at a point where we're afraid to say, I don't know. It would be even better if we could just shut the f up and not say anything at all. You don't need to have an opinion on everything. And I get that right now that's hard to do. There's a lot of shame and guilt in not having an opinion these days. 
You're supposed to care about climate change and orangutans, equal pay between the sexes, racism, human rights, animal rights, and don't forget to vote, but if you don't vote for the right person, you're a piece of shit. These are all serious and important issues, but the trope of being part of the problem if you're not part of the solution is tearing people to shreds. This isn't just exhausting for those who are being talked down to because they're uninformed. If you're the type of person that's always ready to rally for a cause, there will be little left of you as an individual. And things move too quickly to be well informed on everything, which is why we end up seeing so many people say regrettable things on the internet. So while it would have been fun to do a deep dive on the history of mainstream media and make a video poking fun at conservatives who love to label anything they don't agree with as fake news, I felt like there was a much better lesson to be learned from Steinbeck's Nobel Prize winning work. People are just people. In a Russian journal, Steinbeck meets many Russians, Ukrainians, and Georgians. And they're all the same. They love good food and good music. They're proud of their family and their heritage. They love to dance and to sing. They have questions about what life is like in America, and they talk about planning for a better future for themselves and for their children. And of course, they want peace and not war. And this is how I feel about social media now. People draw these hard lines in the sand and dehumanize anyone on the other side of it. Anyone who doesn't hold identical beliefs to you is a Nazi, a pig, a communist, or a snowflake. But it's not that simple. It's never been that simple. And to quote the rule book of reddit.com, Remember the human.